Not too long ago, I made a video with famed sushi chef Masa Takayama. And then pretty much out of the blue, Elijah Wood, who happens to be a movie star and a sushi fan, saw it. So I asked Elijah to come with me to one of LA's most traditional sushi restaurants, Q Sushi. And Elijah's never been, so it should be fun. Rub octopuses from Hokkaido, Japan. Oh, that acidity is extraordinary. Right. What is that? What's the sauce? Ah, uh, made from red vinegar. Is that the same type of vinegar that you would use to season your sushi rice? Yes, exactly. Made from sake leaves, oh, sake yeah. cake, mm -hmm. aged for three years in a wow. wooden barrel. Well, I heard that with edamame rice, you can't use any sugar. Is that no true? No sugar. No sugar, mm -hmm. just vinegar. Vinegar and salt. And salt. Ah, okay. And where do you? Where is your salt from? Uh, from Okinawa, Japan. Okinawa. Ah, okay. Why do you pick Okinawa for where you source your salt? The only good salt uh, in Japan. Oh, really? Yeah. Good salt is very rare in Japan. That's beautiful. How long have you been? Making sushi. Making sushi uh, over 30 years. But for 30 years, that's incredible. Over 30 years. Scallop from Hokkaido, Japan. Scallop is one of my favorite things. Yeah. Your rice is really distinctive as well. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Yeah. Good? I've honestly, I don't think I've yeah. ever had rice quite like this before. Vinegar and salt, that's it. And then the progression of your omakase, do you generally start out with um, more mild fish more and more mild, delicate? Sado fish and sado and battery, sado battery, you know, just like wave. Yeah, it's mm. like a little journey. It is. Mm -hmm. And what's more important, fish or rice? Uh, fish or rice? Uh, rice. Yeah. I think that's something that most people don't realize. Agreed. To me, it's also important in, in my experience is the fish to rice ratio, which I feel a lot of people mess up. Definitely. <laughs> what, what is your feeling about that in regards to how much rice versus the amount of fish? 70 to 30? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. it, it always frustrates rice, me. When rice, rice, 70. It's, you think it was, rice is 70? Mm hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> I did not, okay. Well, maybe 60 passing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brook from South Korea. I think a lot of people don't understand or recognize the amount of work that goes into preparing a piece of fish before it actually is served to somebody. Mm -hmm. And there's this misconception of fresh fish, but yeah. all this fish that you're eating, it's never fresh. It's, I don't know, like a week old, two weeks old, however, however long the chef is curing it or whatever techniques he's doing to prepare the fish. How long does it take from when, roughly, from when a fish is caught to when you get it? Small fish, uh, fresher yeah. the better, but the big fish, yeah. like tuna. Like tuna. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Two weeks. Two weeks? Wow. Mm -hmm. nice. We keep tuna in an ice box, a crushed ice box. Right. So it's better two weeks later. That's fascinating. Isn't that I cool? I learned something today. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more Eater content, click here. The idea of culinary education is fairly new to the US compared to Europe. In the 1870s, the Women's Educational Association of Boston created the Boston Cooking School, which was the first school in the US with the express purpose of culinary education. It was created to give women the cooking skills to use in and outside of their homes. Then, in 1911, the government started promoting a system that was based off of the European culinary system, where the apprentices had to complete a 6,000-hour work commitment to be a certified chef. 